to being weak. You conform to being strong. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Then let the poor also be able to say what? I'm rich. Don't conform to your circumstance. So when the circumstance looks at you and the enemy is trying to get you to talk like your circumstance, believe like your circumstance, you have the right not to conform. Now notice now, because you are in the kingdom and the circumstances is out of the kingdom. And so you have to be able to take a kingdom stand concerning the things that comes into your life. Okay, this morning I want to deal with uh, something else, the second part of our series. I want to look at mindsets and its importance. Mindsets and its importance. The value and the importance of a mindset. You know, practically, when I relate to people, I have found out that sometimes, even as great as believers is, that where they are in life is not as a result of the devil. I hate when people talk too much about the devil. I'm not saying don't talk about him. You could talk about him. But you talk about him to put so much value on him as if he's responsible for your own downfall. The reality is this. The devil cannot do what he does when he wants to do it and how he wants to do it. I know you may not believe that, but that is a reality. Just as God operates with your cooperation, the devil operates with your cooperation. He has been defeated. He is not going to be defeated anymore. He was, he was once defeated as a result of the work of the cross. Your job and my job is to enforce that defeat. So everywhere he raises up his head, I'm going to enforce the defeat on the cross. But the reason I get defeated majority of the time is because of my mindset. The way I think. Let me tell you, people of God, many of us don't even know how dangerous our thinking is. You have come to become addicted with your thinking until it no more bother you. It doesn't bother most people, you know, uh, 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 they, are, they are thinking. Like cultural wise, uh, now when you talk about African or Nigerian, there will be a first thing that comes to you. The first thing that comes to you is really the behavior that you have seen that have been demonstrated by their thinking. You talk about uh, the Spanish culture, something comes to you. You talk about the American culture, something comes to you. And all of those stuff is as a result of our mind. Mindset. Are you listening to me? So look at three scriptures. Let's begin. We want to look at Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, chapter 23. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Act like you've not seen these scriptures before. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Now notice now, it's significant. The Bible says, for as he thinks in his what? In his what? In his heart. For as he thinks in his heart, not just as he thinks, but as he thinks in his heart. It is amazing what the role of our heart does to us. Now, notice now, the heart is the storage room through which our thoughts and ideas are established. Very important that you have that. Your heart is the storage room. It is the storage room through which our thoughts and our ideas, whether it is a negative thought or, or a positive thought or negative ideas or positive ideas are established, are established. Now, notice the Bible says, for as you think in your heart, for as you think in your heart. So what does it mean to think? The word to think means to use one's mind or to direct one's mind actively to form, very key, to form connected ideas. It means to use one's mind or to direct one's mind actively to form connected ideas that becomes a language. It becomes a language. It becomes a language. It means to use one's mind or to direct one's mind actively to form connected ideas that becomes a language. Now, you got to catch this because now the Bible says, as a man now thinketh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. 
So in my heart uh, uh, reside thoughts and ideas that are established. My thinking becomes what draws those thoughts and those ideas. Now notice now, if my thoughts and idea are positive, if they are godly, if they line up with the will of God, it eventually affects how I operate. How you operate is really part of your thinking. So if you are broke, it is not because the devil made you broke. Okay, Whatever place you are right now, Please, people of God, it is imperative that you understand this. Change doesn't come by hands laid on you. Change comes because you accept the truth of God's word in your heart and you make a commitment to permit the power of the truth to transform you. If my thinking is warped, which means that the thoughts and ideas that are established in me are warped, guess what? What I release from my mouth, my languages, my behavior will also become warped. Are you listening to me? So all I need to do to begin the journey of transforming my life, to become the picture of that which God has spoken, is to begin to change my thinking. Your cultural thinking, you know, your own life thinking, your neighborhood thinking, whatever thinking that violates God's word. Do you know you could be a part of a church who don't believe in healing? A part of a church that don't believe in speaking of tongues? A part of a church that don't believe in prosperity? There are churches that don't believe in this. And you can become addicted to this and it can become your way of thinking. And you just believe he doesn't take all of that. You don't need to be healed. You don't need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And all of those stuff. And when you are stuck in that, your behavior towards when you hear healing, when you hear tongues, and when you hear anything that has to do with these things, you resist it. Do you know, if you really want to become the picture of what God says, this is where it begins. This is where it begins. If you invest to change your thinking, you will change your life. You change your thinking, you will change your life. You have to be intentional, very intentional, very deliberate. When we began to build this church, one of the commitments that we made, we're not going to make this an, a, a, an African church, a this church, or a that church. We're going to make this a church of all nations. You have to be deliberate and very intentional. That means you're going to have to change the way you think. Because the way you think is going to affect what you do, okay? What you do, the songs we sing, how we exhibit certain things. As you begin to change your thinking, you begin to change these areas of your life. Look at the next scripture. <clears throat> Matthew, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter uh, 12. Matthew chapter 12. Notice what the Bible says. It says, you offspring of vipers. How can, you, how can you speak good things when you are evil? Then he goes on to say, he said, for out of the fullness, another scripture says, out of the abundance of the what? Of the what? Of the heart, the mouth what speaks. Remember now we explain about the heart. Do you see the track and the role of how significant the heart is? Out of the abundance of my heart. Those thoughts, those uh, ideas that have been stored in there, out of the abundance, their mouth will speak. Not only the mouth speaking, but every behavior of my life comes out of it. Then go to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs 4 verse 23. Because of how significant our heart is, the Bible then tells us in Proverbs 4 23, it says, now you keep and you guard your heart. Keep and guard your heart. Why do you have to keep and guard your heart? Because you have to be careful of the thoughts and the ideas that comes in. If my heart is the seat of my government, 
if that is where everything emanates from, don't you think you want to be able to protect your heart? I mean, just like we are in service right now. If you don't guard your heart, I mean, you will take a trip. You will go somewhere right now, just right now. You don't have to get on. You have to guard and keep your heart guarded with all vigilance or with all diligence. The Bible says, and above all you got, for out of it, what? Flows the issues of, the Bible said, the springs of life. The word issues, when you see it in the King James Version, that word means the boundaries of your life. The boundaries of your life. What it actually infers is this. How far you go in God is not determined by your mother-in-law. It is not determined by the government. It is not determined by a nation. Guess what? It is determined by your heart. It is determined. Don't blame anybody for your failure. My heart determines how far the enlargement of my boundary, my successes are determined by it. So now the question is this. What do we do about mindset? Write this down. Mindsets are what breaks us through. Very key. Mindsets are what breaks us through to the possibilities and the realities that life has to offer. Okay? Mindsets are what breaks us through or give us a breakthrough. If you're looking for a breakthrough, mindsets are what breaks us through to the possibilities, to the possibilities, to the possibilities and the realities that life has to offer. So, no man changes his life for the better without first changing his mindset. The possibilities and the realities of life doesn't happen if you don't have the right mindset. Because that is where it begins, okay? It begins there. Now, notice now, what is a mindset? What is a mindset? Everyone has some level of mindset. It could be an ungodly mindset. It could be a godly mindset. But whatever areas of your life that you aren't experiencing victory in, the first thing you have to look into is to examine your mindset concerning that area. Number one, a mindset is a set of assumptions. A set of assumptions. What is an assumption? An assumption is what we accept as true without proof or without verification. You were taught that, mama taught you that, uh, your neighborhood taught you that, your culture taught you that. Uh, there is no proof of verification that uh, it is true, okay? We accept as true without proof of verification. That is why you have to change your mindset to a godly mindset because a godly mindset has a proof and it is backed by the word of God itself. It is a set of assumption, a set of attitude and method of doing things that produces a way of thinking. Ultimately, the assumptions, the attitudes, and the method eventually produces a way of thinking. What I assume, my attitude, attitude are predisposition, and my methods actually causes me, you know, to think different. Number two, a mindset is a collection of thoughts. These are thoughts that could be positive or negative. They are a collection of thoughts. They are a collection of ideas or beliefs that shapes your thought habit. So some people, their thought habit is always godly. And some people, their thought habit is always ungodly because they have collections of thought ideas and beliefs that is contrary to the will of God itself. Okay? And your thought habits affect then the way you think. It affects the way you think. The collection of those thoughts eventually affect the way you think and then the way you feel and eventually what you do. Do you see the progression? It affects the way I think and then it affects how I feel. Do you know your thought will affect how you feel? Okay. 
All of a sudden, when you think something negative, I mean, the smile leaves your face. You know, the joy leaves you. The passion leaves you. It is amazing what you do. You know, it affects it. And that is why you have to address your mind. Nobody can do that for you. As much as I'm teaching and preaching to you right now, until you make a decision that I'm going to make my mind a priority and deal with my mind, you won't change your life. You will just go through a cycle, just a cycle. Today you feel good for a week, for three weeks, and then you go back to it again because of those collections of thoughts and ideas and beliefs that you embrace. It comes to everybody. Do you think it's just you alone? It comes to everybody, but not everybody what? Accept it or embrace it. The more you refute a thought, a negative thought, the more you refute it, the more it weakens its advancement towards you. The more you embrace it, the more it is easy for you, for, for it to tag on you. So when it comes on you, he tells you you're going to die. You don't pause and think on it. You just refute it. No, I won't die. I will live to declare the purpose of God. You, you just have to keep refuting it. It is often said that a bird can fly over your head, but he doesn't have a right to land or perch on you. If he land and perch on you, it is your responsibility. Number three, the third is mindset are internal dictates. They are internal dictates that eventually become an internal picture of how we see ourselves. Now, it's really amazing all of a sudden, when the enemy begins to attack your mind, you know, he puts this thought, and this thought, they just grow. The more you ponder on it, it grows. You see yourself broke. You see yourself sick. You see yourself exactly the picture of what is formed in you. And eventually, you begin to respond to it. Don't act like you don't have power to deal with this circumstance. You know, you don't need pity. It is the same dominion authority that is given to one person and that is given to you. You just have to consistently, well, I've done this for a year. Keep doing it. The Bible says it is through faith and patience that the patriarch of old, that they receive their result. The Bible didn't say it is through faith and two days or true faith and four weeks, or true faith and six months. It is true faith and what? Patience. The more you are patient in doing it, the more without you even knowing, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker until one day he doesn't have the strength like it used to have on your behalf. Now notice now the formations of these assumptions. The formations of these assumptions, thought, ideas, and method, they come from four areas of our life. Number one, our parental upbringing. The way you were raised can actually become a reason why you have this mindset, this way of thinking. Look, you can change it, but this is where it gets formed. If I was raised poor, I was raised broke, you know, uh, you were raised with a need, you have to be very careful because you can become a very stingy person and then try to think that you are managing money. When in reality, it is a spirit of stinginess because you realize at a point in your life where something happened, nobody had food to eat, and you said to yourself, I will never be in that situation anymore in my life. And you end up developing a stingy spirit. Spirit is set. And then our associations in life, the friends and the people that comes into our life, they can either increase us or they could decrease us ourselves. And then we have circumstances of life, the problems and the difficulties that we went through. Do you know difficulties and problems can create in you a new mindset? I will never again allow anybody to hurt me. 
Something happened in your past and now you have a mindset, a way of thinking that when love is extended to you, you say, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You, you won't get that opportunity. And the reality is, it is a way of thinking as a result of circumstances that happen in your life. Then we have cultural environment, our culture, our places of living. All of this comes to form a mindset. Now, your mindset imparts and determines three vital areas of your life. That is why it is so significant that you deal with the mindset itself. Because it affects these three areas that is really the cog of my life. And who I am today and who you are today, believe me, is as a result of the application of these three areas. Number one, the choices that you make. My mindset can either make me to make a godly choice or an ungodly choice itself. The way you think can give you the ability to make godly choices and ungodly choices. How many of you have made godly choices here? Okay, now everybody will leave, but let me ask the other side. How many of you have made ungodly choices? Yes, we've made ungodly choices. But think for a moment. Do you know why you made the ungodly choice? Because of your mindset. How do you know that, Apostle? Because after two years after, or three years, and you think about it, you say, oh my God. How, how did I make that choice? How did I come to this? It's almost, I must be on drug, on dope. You know, someone must have bind my hand. Why? Because you made it based on your mindset. And uh, as your mindset began to change, you were able to look at your choices and say the choices was wrong. The second is your decisions. Decisions is never established unless choices were made. So the first thing is you make a choice. That choice eventually becomes a decision that you live by. Some folks, the decisions that came out of their choices have not been changed. Some cannot even be changed. Some that have been changed has affected them for life. You know, the Bible lays things down on how we make choices in life and how we make decisions. Never you trust your emotion when you have to make a significant, you know, choice or decision. Well, I hear from God. No, baby, let me tell you. You need to walk that thing through. Because the reality is when you make that choice, uh, some choices are live. You can't. Uh, but there are ways you make the choice. And the Bible says you got to seek counsel in the multitude. Even though God told you. You want somebody else to be involved because you don't, I don't trust my judgment. You can be so in love with something until your judgment in that area become warped that you don't see anything about it. It takes an outsider that sits there and says, hey, okay, okay, baby, look at this area. You got to look at this area. You got to look at that area. You know, I remember I was with my daughter and we went to try to get a car and uh, you know, she took me there so that I could participate in she getting a car. It wasn't because she didn't have brain. It wasn't because she wasn't intelligent. She knew when Papa sits there and the negotiation begins to take place, you're not going to take advantage of her. And all she did was just sit there and let me take charge of it. Sometimes the counsel of someone can help you to avoid long-standing problem. Only in church do we have this problem. If I have to make a big decision, I, I, I understand this. You never make a decision when you're too high and you never make a decision when you are too low. So I need other voices in my life. What do you think? You run through them. When they begin to tell you the pros, you get excited, right? Until they begin to lay the cons to you. And you say, true, I never saw it that way before. And, and the feeling and the sensations that you have about everything begin to dwindle. You see, we get into this stuff because of the way we think. So my choices, okay, it imparts my choices. Number two, it imparts my decisions. And then number three, it imparts my responses in life. 
You know, my son and, and, and my daughter, yeah, I always use them as an example. When they, they, they said, Apostle, we want to buy a car. We want to buy a car. And, and I asked them, what type of car you want to buy? Well, you said, we want to buy a Mercedes Benz. I said, that's great. <laughs> you know, people always come with this lofty. I said, great. Now, uh, how do I talk to them not to, not to bubble or not to bust their bubble? You know, you come with this level of excitement uh, and you just expect. That's why never you come to me for a counsel when you've already made a decision. If you've made your decision, you're wasting your time asking me for a counsel. I will not counsel you. That means I'm not part of your, of your conversation. You've already made your decision. You're looking for me to put my stamp of approval on it. Are you listening to me? It is godly, okay? So I said, okay, that's what you want to buy, okay? Now, I'm not going to prevent you, but let me run through this. Then. Do you know what this is? Do you know the cost? Do you know the maintenance? If one area breaks today, that ends you driving the car. Because where you are there financially, it's not good. Well, they took the cancer. And uh, after they got their, their new car, the car they got, I remember I walked to them. I said, aren't you glad you got this car? When, that, when the new car they got break down, they had to go through a process just to repair that car. Can you imagine if it is that expensive car? Yes, I suppose. So you're right. Now, just imagine what they were saved from. Okay? They were saved from. They had a cool mindset. Okay? And sometimes you could have a real mindset, and until that thing is touched, you don't know the degree of your mindset. So it affects my choices, okay? It affects what? My decisions and my response. In every area, who you marry, the church you go, you know, the job you have. I mean, every area of your life, your mindset affects it. There is no one area that your mindset doesn't affect. And that's why you got to make sure that your mindset is intact because your choices and decisions will eventually become warped. Okay. Now, if my mindset is negative, how do I reset it? How do I reset it? Because I got to reset my mind so that I need to have a godly mindset. A mind that is set. A godly mind set. How do I reset my mind? Or what the Bible call renewing your mind. Okay? You either reset your mind or you renew your mind. Now, understand this. Very important. When I got born again, 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells me, my spirit man gets regenerated. So that means the only part of me that is touched by God is my spirit, okay? Every other part of me is warped. And some of us came into the kingdom of God with a horrible, ungodly mindset. I mean, not just a wrong mindset. Some people, the degree of their way of thinking is so horrible. And then what we have done, we've danced and sang around our mindset and never took the time to begin to examine it and reset it or renew it so that we can become the picture of the new kingdom that we are in and be able to receive the result of the kingdom that we are in. Listen to me. In this kingdom, there is a message. There is a behavior. There is a lifestyle. There is a nature. There is a sacrifice. This kingdom that we are in has its own life. The way of living and the way of operating. And if you don't understand the dynamics of the kingdom and how to operate in the kingdom, you will be denied the privileges that you ought to. I got a series that I did, I don't know, probably a few years ago, two, three years ago, about the dynamics of the kingdom itself. How you live when you are in the kingdom. And how you enjoy the kingdom life itself. It's not just a theology. It is a way of living, just like I explained to you earlier, that the nature of the kingdom is increased. 
So you can't come to tell me, well, you know, some, sometimes some of us should get sick and the other not get it. Well, you are to, no, 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 no. You came too late because I have a revelation that the nature of this kingdom is increased. So if there is no increase, I'm not blaming God. I'm not blaming the devil. I just need to find out the principles in scripture to begin to live the kingdom life. So that you can look like the kingdom, all right? So how do we renew our mind or reset our mind to make sure that the negative way of thinking is eradicated? Renewing of the mind is not just a biblical principle, okay? Very key. It is a general principle and act. Whatever areas of your life you intend to change, the way you change it is to renew it, okay? So you even have Muslims, they renew their mind, you have those monks, they renew their mind. Okay? And uh, you as an unbeliever, if you are an unbeliever, you can renew your mind. Whatever. Th- if, if you see gangs, they come together and they form what they, what they call their church. It's not a church. Okay? It's like, you know, they're coming together. You have to renew your mind concerning the gangs. They got to, you got to get the mind of the gangs in order to be able to function at an ultimate level. And if you come out of that gang, you have to renew your mind in what you are going into. If you don't renew your mind in what you are going into, your mindset in the past will become your present mindset. Because God doesn't save my soul. My soul goes through a daily renewal of the world to make my soul becomes the picture of my spirit. Do you understand that? So now look at it. I had to renew my mind in, in order to be able to adjust to living in America. When I came, I had to change my mind or renew it in order to. So what do we mean by biblical mind renewer? When we talk about biblical mind renewal, what are we talking about? Now, it infers three things. Number one, it is simply the process, the process of exchanging the lies of the enemy. You are exchanging the lies of the enemy for the truth of God's word. It is easy when I am resetting my mind or renewing my mind, what I'm simply doing is I'm exchanging the lies of the enemy. The lies of the enemy that have governed my thinking. I exchange it for the truth of God's word. I have to get into God's word, understand God's word, and make the exchange. Number two, it is the exchanging of your natural way of thinking for God's supernatural way of thinking. There is a natural way of thinking, and there is a supernatural way of thinking. Number three, it is to make new, new. When I renew my mind, I'm making my mind new. To make fresh, it is to restore to vigor or to life. The foundation to every mind renewal of the believer is the word of God. So you have to hear it. You have to hear it. You have to study it and you have to meditate on it. Okay, the foundation of resetting my mind or of renewing my mind is based on God's word because we are in the kingdom. So we want to think like kingdom people so that we can live like kingdom people and then receive kingdom result. So the rules that governs the kingdom is the word of God itself. My job is to hear that word just as you are hearing it this morning and then study that word and meditate on it so that it can make a difference. Without the word of God, you can never renew your mind. Just coming to church doesn't renew your mind. You can come here every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. Your mind is not renewed. You have to make sure that what you have heard You go back home and you study God's word and you meditate on it and something begins to happen, okay? So let's look at the five steps to mind renewal. There are five steps to mind renewal. Number one, it begins, very key, by giving ample of time. Ample of time to the study and to the meditation of God's word. If I want to reset my mind, 
if I want to renew my mind, if I want to exchange the lies of the enemy for the truth of God's word, guess what? I will have to give ample of time to the word and the meditation of God's word itself. Studying the word of God gives you information, knowledge, and understanding of what you are shifting into. But meditating on the word erases, it erases, it erases and cleans the hold in your mind. There is the hold in my mind. When I meditate and I'm meditating on the word, what it does is it erases, it begins to erase without you knowing and cleans the old in your mind and then establish and deepen the new in your mind. So the hold is being removed, is being erased from my mind. The new comes in, uh, but the new doesn't just come in. The new is deepened. It's like it is planted in me. It is becoming a way of living. Because remember, my way of thinking will become my way of living. So now it comes in and it is deepening in me that it begins to affect the way that I live. It plants the seed of a new way of thinking and doing things in your life. Number two. Number two. Now, this is the process. You ask the Lord to guide and direct your mind. If you're going to reset or renew your mind, you, you must be willing to ask the Lord to guide and direct your mind. Now, every behavior begins in the mind. Every behavior. Whatever behavior that you are operating in right now, or whatever addiction you've not been able to deal with, Someone can come, lay their hands on you, and try to break it. But if my mind don't shift, okay? If your mind doesn't shift, pornography is not external. Pornography is internal. It is in the mind. It is imagination. It is a thought. What you got to understand, every behavior begins in the mind. And the mind is where spiritual transformation happens. It is where tr spiritual transformation happens. Not in your spirit because you are born again now. But now your mind now has to shift. That means your spirit man should be invading your soul and commanding your soul to become obligated to the life of the spirit. Yeah. Do you understand yeah. that man is three components? Okay. We have, uh, we have, uh, well, I'm a spirit, uh, then I have a soul, and I live in a body. But in my soul uh, reside three components. My mind, my will, and my emotions. So these are the three areas. Your mind, your will, and your emotion. And the interesting thing is this. That when my mind gets affected, it sends a message to my will. And then he sends a message to my emotion. That's why I begin to react based on my thinking. Or I begin to behave based on my thinking. If you capture the mind, you've captured the will. And you've captured the emotion. If my mind is intact, then my will will become intact. And then my emotion will become intact. So when you find people emotionally, they're up and down, up and down, up and down. And they struggle emotionally. I mean, you could finish all your tears or you want to. Please hear me. I'm training you this morning, okay? You could go through all of that. You can be able to att attribute it to your mind because uh, he will keep them in perfect peace. But look at the condition. Whose mind he stayed on him? You got to understand. Fear functions in your emotion. Joy functions in your emotion. So when there is peace in my mind, it affects every area. My emotion becomes stabilized, okay? It becomes stabilized. Things come into alignment because my mind is intact. The object of your regular thinking, the object of your regular thinking will determine how your days and weeks and months ultimately play out. The object of your regular thinking. So what do you think when you get up? What do you think on a daily basis? Think about it. And I mean when the day is over, you're depressed. Were well, you depressed because the object of your thinking is what affected your days. Are you listening to Are you breathing this morning? 
Okay? Because God wants to change us. He wants to affect our life. He wants us to live this high life. The high life doesn't show up because a promise is made to you. You can have the promise of God and don't experience it. These are the things that the Spirit of God is expecting me to walk in so that I can be able to see the result of the truth of prosperity. Everything starts in the mind with a thought. It starts in the mind with a thought. If I defeat that thought, no image will ever exist. But the reason the image is there is because the thought is there. This is what we do. Many times when a thought comes to us, we fall in love with those thoughts. Because it is a thought that gravitates our emotion. So some of us don't know how to release it. We keep it for five minutes. From five minutes, it becomes ten minutes. Ten minutes, it becomes thirty. And before you know an hour, and before you know, you are sleeping with a thought. Not a right thought, but a negative thought. Now, notice now, this is how it works. So, when you wake up the next day, now the thought says, I've already got the seed in the ground. So, it is enforced now. It is easy now for the thought to reattach itself to you. Now, you have those thoughts in your life that actually affects you. So you guide your thought and you will direct your mind. If you guide your thought, you will direct your mind. If I guide my thought, I will direct my mind. Number three, recognize the source of self-defeating thoughts. If you are going to reset your mind and going to renew your mind, you have to recognize the source of self-defeating thoughts. Knowing that every behavior begins in the mind and that the mind is where spiritual transformation happens, the enemy will do everything to constantly mess your thinking. He will constantly mess your thinking through what? Through thoughts. I mean through thoughts. I tell you people of God, if you catch this, I mean the only moment that your mind rests is when you sleep. When you get up in the morning, those thoughts are coming. The thoughts of the bill, the thoughts of the job, the thoughts of your children, the thoughts of the I mean, it just comes, 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 like and just barraging you. It doesn't barrage your hand, your leg, but it barrages your mind. So you have to recognize the source of those self-defeating thoughts. You know when you wake up, it's about to hit you. Sometimes you got to design a prayer that you pray each morning to address your thought. If you struggle in that area, design something. Hear me, people of God. No improvement takes place if you don't change your thoughts. Nobody loves me is a thought. My daddy rejected me is a thought. You know, Pastor Vicky was telling me a story this morning. Really, really amazing. I don't know if she has told you guys and, and, uh, or she would tell you guys. Uh, three, three children in one family. Three sisters in one family. Three sisters in one family suffered three different, uh, suffered, uh, uh, the, had the opportunity for rejection. The father left, you know. Her father left. The way she saw it was different. The way her older sister saw it was different. But the way the middle sister saw it was totally different. And so she sat in the window for two years, uh, hoping that the father will return. And after two years, she realized the father is not going to return. That messed up her thinking. How can three kids in the same house with the same father and the same mother have the same experience? Not a different experience. The same experience. And one was messed up. And the others were in. You always have to recognize the source of self-defeating thoughts. So you have to always learn to recognize it and make sure that you put your finger on it. This is where it comes from. This is how it happens. It is at these moments of my life that it takes place. And the assignment of every thought negative is to deprive you 
of advancement, success, prosperity. That's the purpose of every negative thought that is initiated by the enemy. If I think something godly, my life will begin to be reflective of something godly. Just three more minutes. Number what? Number five? Number four. Now, we replace self-defeating thoughts with a God-focused mindset. You replace self-defeating thoughts with a God-focused mindset. How do you do this? How do you do this? Train your mind. You got to train your mind. Your mind doesn't just get adapted. You train your mind to concentrate on the things of God. I mean, we train dogs. We train cats. I mean, people even train rats. There are things that we train as stubborn as a horse is, they could be trained. So guess what you do? Train your mind to concentrate on the things of God, to focus your mind on God's requires work. If you do not purposely set your mind on Jesus Christ, your mind will go everywhere. Everywhere. You know, when the enemy begins to attack you, the enemy begins to interpret the attacks in thoughts. It's amazing. If you, if your thought can be revealed this morning, it's amazing your thought life. Some people have an ability to harness that thought because they have been training. You're not just going to leave at the building this morning and then you hear the message, oh, oh yeah, my thought. No, you got to train. When you're training something, that means you participate in. It is very intentional. You are conscious of this. No, I'm not going to think it. No, I'm not going to think. No, I know you again. I'm not going to. You fight that thought until the strength of it become weaker and weaker. And before you know, it is not as frequent as it used to be against you. Finally, number five. You rest in the truth that you are accepted in Jesus Christ. You rest in the truth that you are accepted in Jesus Christ. Sometimes you may immediately be able to recognize the enemy at work in your mind. And at other times you may not be as quick to recognize it. So you think and enjoy the thought. All you have to do when you come to that place of mistake, you just rest in the work of Christ and begin the fight again. You don't need to feel guilty. Okay, because it's a training. You train, you fall, you get up. You train, you fall, you get up. You train, you fall, you get up. And every time you fall, guess what you do? You get up and you rest in the knowledge of who Christ is to you. Listen to me, people of God. If I can break your head, not in a negative way, and put this in you and make you understand everything you don't like in your life that is of the enemy can be changed. It really can be changed. The reason it's not changed is because you don't want it to be changed. No, Apostle, I really want it to be. That's not true. If you really want it to be changed, you're going to enforce these things. It takes work. It is the work and the time and the pain and the inconveniency of it that make us just throw in the tower. But yet, we don't like that choice. We don't like that decision. We don't like the response. Because you understand. But the truth is, you can change it. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. So I have to change what goes in so that my thinking now can be positively affected. And then Philippians explain it more to us. The book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. It tells us the boundaries of our thought life. The boundary. If you think for just a minute, you're thinking about that. Is it lovely? If we talk about what you just talk, taught right now. If we just talk about it. How will people respond? Will it produce praise? Is it of good report? You could use this guideline. Ah, no, I'm not going to think that because it, I'm not going to. This becomes a guideline that you use to train your spirit so that uh, your thought life begins to change. 
Now, to most Christians, you know, we can shout this over and just get excited. You know, to some believers, it is easy for curse word to come out. You know why it's easy? I know you don't use it here. You use it outside. The reason it's easy, uh-huh, you, you laugh, yeah. Uh-huh. You don't use it here. You use it outside. But the reason it's easy for it to come out is because you have abundance of it inside of you. You have abundance of it inside of you. It's just there. I mean, you got piles and piles and piles of it that it has been incorporated into your daily language. But when you come to church, you, 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 like the priest that goes, they come in before they come in. They, they, they tell you, when they get outside and they're trying to use the cause, no, 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 no. The priest is here. Don't use this word in the presence of the priest. We could use it after we leave the priest. Or we could use it after we leave the church. But that is not who we are. Everything, remember my heart is a container. That's where the ideas and the thoughts, good or bad, are stored. And uh, if you don't get rid of it and put the right stuff in, it will betray you. When you get angry, you go, F, 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 Because that's what is stored in there. It comes out. You don't know how to use any other word, but, but you, you know that is the word that will produce a sting in people. But if we change our mind, we can change our destiny. Now bow your head, bow your head. Father, thank you for this responsibility. On our own, we can change. Your word says in John chapter 15, that without me, you can do nothing. Without you, there is no strength, no might to be able to accomplish the godly lifestyle. So Holy Spirit, this morning, I pray. I pray for our friends that are watching this broadcast from wherever part of the world that they're listening to this broadcast. And I pray for your people in this building that your ultimate desire is that we live a prosperous life. That means a life of advancement. A life that we are not easily defeated. A life where the cycles of poverty, of lack, of restriction is broken and destroyed. First of all, Father, I pray that the spirit of revelation and insight of this word will become real to everyone that have heard the sound of your voice. That something moves into the hearts of your people and the grace for practice. The grace for practice will come alive in them that when we leave this building and when the broadcast is over this morning, that men and women will make a commitment to say, I'm going to live this life for God, not for church, not for man. I ask you, mighty Holy Spirit, that you will walk this in the lives of people. I challenge now every spirit of darknesses, every power of darknesses, sicknesses, diseases, the spirit of depressions, of discouragement, that worrying spirit, anxious spirit, that mind troubling and emotional spirit, that thing that have captured your mind that gets you in that state, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I break your powers over the minds, over the will and the emotions of the people of God. I command the spirit of deliverance, that spirit of healing, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I know you believe it. I pray into your spirit now that the grace goes into you. That a shift begins today. A shift begins today. And the strength to turn things around becomes a reality in you. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you now. Thank you for changing us. Thank you for the beginning process. Thank you for leading us. Come on, open your mouth and just begin to thank him. You begin to thank him. Without him, you can do nothing. His word is alive. But it takes the grace of God to move from point A to point B. And the presence of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is made available to help you, to transform you. 
to change you, to bring you to the place where the cycles of poverty, the cycles of poverty is broken. Come and worship Him. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes. Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord, God has strong. Yes. Thank you, Spirit of grace. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your might. We thank you for your power. Thank you for your faithfulness. Your faithfulness towards us. Thank you, Lord. Father, I bless your people this morning. I empower them to advance, to be successful, to be victorious. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and thank you for watching Reformers Life broadcast. We are so glad that you were imparted by the service. We have some special offers of powerful resources for you this month to enhance your growth and strengthen your pursuit and relationship with God. Here in the month of September, we are excited to make you aware of a great book bundle that we're making available to you that will enable you to recognize and overcome the dangers of the spirit of frustration in your life. Frustration is something that believers face on an ongoing basis. It is one of the silent weapons of the enemy against us to destroy plans and purposes. It doesn't matter who you are. Frustration is a spirit that comes upon every individual, and if we don't know how to properly deal with it, it has the potential to nullify and destroy the very things the Holy Spirit intended for our lives. Many believers look at frustration as something that is normal and harmless, but the ultimate purpose of the spirit is to disrupt the things that have been established in our lives. We must continue to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to stabilize our emotions to defend against the spirit of frustration. This month's bundle includes the life-changing book, Overcoming the Spirit of Frustration, as well as the CD series entitled Principles for Dealing with Frustration in Different Times. Get your copy of this month's bundles by ordering online at EcclesiaWord.org or by contacting us directly at 718-904-8530. That's EcclesiaWord.org or 718-904-8530.
Thank you and God bless. Ecclesia Word Ministries International presents Dream Life Church International in the greater New York area. Visit EcclesiaWord.org or call 718-904-8530. Partnership Redefined Partnership Blessing If you have been blessed, changed, and imparted by today's message, we extend an opportunity for you to partner with us. Partnership Defined Partnership is defined as a relationship between individuals characterized by mature cooperation and responsibility. Partnership Supply It is more than commitment. It's about tapping the unlimited supply of Holy Ghost power to effect change. Partnership Investment Here is the exciting news. The more you invest, the greater your reward and return. Partnership Mission Dear friends, together we can change the world and impact it with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Partnership Power Discover how partnership releases the flow of His anointing and power through being a partner with us. Partnership Share Share in what God is doing through Reformers Life Broadcast as we touch others through this and other outreaches. Partnership Vision Remember that you are a Reformer and you walk in the anointing of Reformation and your faith in God is changing your circumstances. Partnership Connect Call today 1-718-904-8530 or online at ecclesiaword.org That's 1-718-904-8530 or online at ecclesiaword.org How excited are you to read this book? Very exciting. I think uh, Pastor Vicky is a great author, she's a great teacher, and I love her very much. She's one of our great pastors. It's very life-changing. I've had the privilege to read through it, and I've gone through the book, and it has so many nuggets. It'll be a phenomenal outturn, and I know there will be many things that are going to be said about this book. It's just You know, because I think a lot of times we think that if I just get rid of the root of bitterness, so if, I got, if I pray more, if I fast more, sometimes you just got to love more. And I think that that's something that this book really helps you to really get a grasp on. So It deals with the supernatural life of God, and it will teach us how to really flow in what the supernatural life is all about. So I encourage you, make sure you get it. Get the book. God bless you. Thank you for joining Reformers Life Broadcast. We hope you have been blessed and imparted by this teaching, and we look forward to being with you again. To request this teaching in its entirety, and for a complete catalog of all of our books, CDs, and DVDs, please visit us at EcclesiaWord.org. Remember that you are a reformer, and you walk in the anointing of reformation, and your faith in God is changing your circumstances.